Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue talking about the OvoLink 8 port affordable PoE switch. We've done our unboxing and now we want to have a look at the software. So in order to get into this device what we're utilizing is a direct LAN connection to this switch. I've disabled all internet traffic via Wi-Fi and right now we are connected via a conduit device where the internet connection is we are connected LAN into the network switch and into my Wi-Fi router. So in order to continue from this point, I opened up the browser and I went into this area. This is the local, uh, doma uh, not domain, IP of the switch in question. The login by default is admin admin and we're going to make our way in. So here is the user interface of our OVO link switch. As we can see, it's pretty technical. Compared with a number of different routers and network switches that I've dealt with over the last couple of years, this is definitely one that's a bit more techy. I definitely can't refer to this as a device that's going to be easy to read. We can have a look at the system information. We can see a lot of information about the IP, of course. We can change it there. And we can change the gateway and a bunch of other bits of information about the background details and configuration of our switch. So do keep an eye open for some of the stuff that I might not talk about, but might be on screen that's relevant to you. Now, of course, we can change the login information and create a new admin account with this device. You can even create a sub account, but we're not going to do that. And there is a software upgrade area where you can upgrade the firmware. But I can tell you right now that trying to find a firmware upgrade for this switch has proved incredibly difficult. With this switch being reproduced with a number of other brand labels on top of it, I would say that trying to get the firmware for this... I could have sorted for this video, but from what I've seen of images, the firmware on this hasn't changed a great deal in software updates. So the default is actually pretty good for all of the systems and services that it offers and does make it competitive um, against something like the Netgear GS or GLP switch that we're going to talk about in a comparison video coming very, very soon. If we go to the port management section, we can see that this switch I've connected a few things here. Now, um, of the three things that have been connected to the eight available ports, the ones I want you to pay attention to, of course, are the ones that have already got a negotiation link status. Um, these consist of a connection to the router supplying the internet connectivity to this office that I'm in, the LAN connection on the de laptop device that I'm using right now, and I've connected a PoE camera a power over ethernet camera to see if any of the poe options present themselves in this software overview we can find out a little bit more information about the configuration of these ports but of course we have to select a port first so let's have a look at this port here this is port 9 and from there we can go into the configuration of this port we can then change its priority give it a priority status we can even change how it behaves in certain modes how we want it to negotiate data packets we can even limit or increase the individual speeds with we us changing its priorities with regards to upload and download as well as changing its kind of overall bandwidth uh, priority across the entire network interface and we can change these figures and apply them very very easily so if there are certain servers and systems that are a priority in your home or business environment this is very much where you want them to live the same goes with port mirroring and changing the individual settings you're able to mirror data packets and ports and settings together and therefore have them as failovers or more now we can produce different statistics with regards to data packets sent to and from and there's a bit more information with regards to power over ethernet later but as you can see these three ports are already working relatively hard as they are and you can definitely see the difference between them of what those devices are if we look at the port rate, we can find out a little bit more information. But again, this is where we get into the little more technical area where I recommend you check out my Switches for Dummies video coming very, very soon where I'm going to talk through as many of these common uh, pseudonyms and common abbreviations that you find in the world of switches and modems and routers that are just thrown on the bottom of spec sheets but never really explained. Now, VLAN or Virtual LAN is the ability to create sub networks within a switch so this switch is an 8 slash technically 10 port switch if you include the uplink port and the sfp port and what we can do here is we can create a sub network so from here we can decide to assign certain ports let's say ports 4 and 5 into a new switch arrangement so we can actually just give it an identity and then this will 
uh, assign these packet uh, these ports together to create a separate sub network so if we give this one we'll give this uh, port id 111 and then this new sub network exists within the network environment of this switch which is pretty handy and i'm quite glad. i mean this is something a lot of mid to you know mid-range switches do offer you will have to spend at least 50 or 60 quid to take advantage of a feature like this and it's good that it's on this eight port poe switch included and this means that devices connected on these two ports are now in their own sub network so in other words these devices can communicate but not in the wider network unless we give them permission so i'm going to delete that sub network for now and move into some of the other options now, some of this, once again, is incredibly technical. Some of it even goes over my head, and I've dealt with these things for a long time, hence the need for my dummies video. But the ability that we can create these uh, sub-networks and mixed networks is still quite impressive to have on uh, a device at this price threshold. Now, there are other kind of mm, uh, anachronisms that we could really go into during the course of this video, which a lot of them are just going to be too technical for this video which is why i'm kind of overviewing a number of these tabs for you because if you're looking for them at least then you have some idea rather than making this video 20 or 25 minutes long talking about stuff that you either already know or bombarding you with information you're not going to need qos or quality of service allows you to assign priorities to certain ports making sure that if you assign priorities between 0 and 7, as you saw earlier in the port management section, then you can decide which of the ports take the most priority and ensure that they get full bandwidth control compared with other ports. But there's a little bit more control than that, with the ability to create um, this kind of hierarchy of importance across those ports and a behavior pattern as well, which is pretty handy indeed. Moving forward, we can look at that PoE tab, which is one of the main reasons that a number of you are going to utilize a device like this. So first and foremost, you can actually restrict the overall power consumption if you're worried about PSU power being used too high. There's the maximum limit of 130 there, with a dedicated maximum on each port of 30 watts. But obviously with eight ports, they're not all going to get 30 at the same time. So you can lower or heighten that figure as needed. You can then look at a lot of the other settings and actually change individual ports and priorities and settings here with regards to PoE. So for example, let's go to that port that's got the PoE camera connected. You can see we can assign a power limit to it and a priority. And if you're going to be using things like uh, PO, uh, power over Ethernet phones or power over Ethernet cameras, you're going to want those to be pretty high. You can even change the power limit to make sure that you don't overload a device or make sure a device doesn't drain the available power via your PoE switch. A nice little feature there, well done over link for making sure that was in included. We can come out of there and look at individual PoE status. We can see the power consumption that is happening in real time. Right now, because the camera has not been set up, it's not drawing that much power. And as you can see, its draw is very, very small. And you can see it there on port two, with the power being consumed with none of the other devices consuming power because they are not poe devices after this you've got um acl for control and you've got other configuration options going all the way down that allow you to create different rules of identity and protection across your network if you've got for example the mac of a certain device or an ip of a device you can make sure that certain instances and rules happen in the background on your device if these devices are connected you can even create a ban network device a uh, ban network of devices if you so choose as well as monitor connected devices very very easily you can even make sure that static port addresses and static mac addresses are assigned within this device and make sure that certain behavior patterns are adhered to um, within your private network via, via, via the virtual network or the one that comes by default. Configuration management options here at the bottom are quite straightforward. If you've already got preset rules of network devices in your home or business environment that you've already created, which I believe will be in XLS um, not um, formats, there may be CSV, then you can upload them here or save the configuration of this device and keep that in case you need to start afresh and then refer back to those rules of network control whenever you need them. Now, I'm not going to pretend that the OVO Link 8 port switch 
is a particularly exciting or sexy device. It really isn't. And it lacks a lot of the graphical flair and the smart, snazzy graphical user interface that we're used to from things like the Synology and QNAP switches and routers, as well as some of the more modern uh, Netgear Nighthawk switches too. But this isn't trying to compete with those. It's trying to let you know that there is a cost-effective alternative out there, which, although it has a slightly steeper learning curve, is still remarkably easy to use. And as you've seen from this video, it has not been a struggle. It may not be the most user-friendly for those new to the field of networking, but then networking is a very tough subject to make chewable and user-friendly. So I'm going to wrap things up now and uh, get ready for the comparison between this and the Netgear device and hopefully that software overview too that will show you what I mean by the difference between these devices. So if you found this video useful or want to learn more, click like and subscribe as appropriate and otherwise I'll see you next time.